Hi, my name is Rebecca M. Carroll, and here we are back to these really exciting PowerPoints. The reason why we're going through this, we generally like to add a little more zip to our PowerPoints, but this is what it looks like. This is from the federal government. It's more important that you're actually looking at the slides and recognizing it, and we just want to be able to help people not make errors. It impacts your financial aid, and it's important that this is done right, and it's very overwhelming. It's a really big form. So let's talk about the independent student. If you are a dependent student, meaning that your parents pay for at least half of, of your uh, support for and you live with them, you're under 23, you're not married, you don't have a child, you're not part of the foster care system, then you are considered dependent. Now we're talking about independence. So if you are someone who has enlisted in the military, if you are 23 and up, and if you are married, if you have a child, there are many reasons why. If you have a child and your parents don't claim you, then you will be considered an independent student. So let's begin. Again, they require that FSA ID. So many people who are returning from school and our own fabulous media technologist, Nias discovered this as well. He ended up, um, he had a, a FAFSA ID. <laughs> he ended up having his information in the FAFSA. So if you, even if you have gone to school 10 years ago, you will still be listed in this form. So what happens is, if especially if you're using the same email, they'll recognize the email. So when you get to this part and you try to create an FSA ID, just don't panic if it says we recognize this email already. Just follow the instructions. And we're going to do a whole thing on just how to get your FSA ID, how to make it so that they're verified. But for now, we're going to focus on the actual FAFSA form. We're going to assume you have an SFA, FSA ID. Boy, whew, need another cup of coffee and that you have your verified email so you can use either your login or your verified email and then you go to your password. They ask you to accept that you know you're not a third party you're this you know you're who you say you are and that the federal government has a disclaimer that basically if you make a mistake on the form it's your fault. So here we begin we're starting with the 2019 2020 FAFSA. We press that button on the left. We create a save key. If you haven't created one already, and it can be the same one over and over, they actually don't make you change this. They do make you change your password, um, but they don't make every year, but they don't make you change your save key. So do something that's, you know, I, a lot of times if I have a student who's a dancer, I'll have them do dancer or you know, something that everybody can identify with, write it down. And again, we have that really great sheet for you to keep yourself organized. So if you go to thecoachingeducator.com forward slash free downloads, click on the FAFSA data worksheet, print it out, and you'll be able to keep your information there. And I just recommend that you keep it with your copy of your taxes. And you can use the same login, the same email, you have to change your password every year and the same save key. It's really just a very convenient form and, and truthfully a, a client of mine suggested making it to make it easier and so I've been using it for years now. So here you have your directions. I oftentimes tell people open up documents because that little one that says documents needed to complete the FAFSA, it's important for you to open that up and see everything you need so you're not running back and forth. That can be a helpful thing. So here we go. We go in and we put your information in. Make sure your social security number is accurate and your birth date and lay it out exactly how they're asking you to do it. You put your permanent mailing address and try to look at your tax form and how that is laid out. So this particular example, it says 123 Feral Drive. Well, if it, on your tax form it says drive, it's written out drive, then I want you to do that. It's just very, it's a lot easier. 
please use your email and the email that's not necessarily tied to a school. And then how many times have you lived in the state that you actually are, that you've identified that you live in? If you haven't lived in a particular state for five years they and you check no, there'll be a series of questions that come up and it just basically is asking you to identify where you were previously. They want rough dates, month and year you moved, month and year you were at a place. Then we have you check whether you are male or female, they um, one or the other, this is the only options that they're giving on this form. You put your telephone number, your driver's license. So as an independent, it's really important to put your driver's license in to support that you actually are a person who's living in the state and you qualify for in-state funding. Many people do move to be able to go to school as an independent person and they still have requirements. They still require you, so I really encourage you to Look it up in California. They require that you have two years of, of your um, taxes done and, and actually demonstrate that you really are independent and in supporting yourself. But there are other states that just require you to be there for a certain amount of time. The first thing you want to do is you want to get your driver's license so that your car registered, your driver's license, so that you actually start the process of being truly considered excuse me, truly considered an in-state person and qualify for their in-state, for in-state. So I would encourage you to put your driver's license in as soon as you get a change. They're going to ask you your marital status. When that drops down, there'll be several different options, whether you're single or divorced. Um, are you a citizen? You check that. Uh, we go into, and I will be talking about people who are not considered a citizen. This is a series. We're trying to help you understand. We find a lot of errors on this form, so we have decided to do a series. So we're going to talk about the different pieces if you're undocumented, um, all kinds of all the pieces that you need to know. We'll label them so it will be easy for you to not waste your time. They want you to identify your high school. They want you to look at what grade you'd be at. So one of the things that I get asked when I have adult students that come in, they're not really even sure. So if for whatever reason you were able to complete at least a year or you have some college credit, including if you went to the military, if you were enlisted, you, you have college credit. There are, you will get credit. So you're gonna wanna track down that transcript. So if you're in the military, it is online. It's in your online portal that you have to log into because they've moved everything to online and you actually can request your transcript be sent to you as well as to the future school that you're thinking of going to and find out how many electives you have. Many of them qualify for electives that you get from the military, but it's still a nice chunk. Um, so I see that all the time. People aren't aware of it. And if it can eat up some of your electives, that will be less time spent at college. And um, it might move you into the sophomore year. So you want to be able to get your credit. Now, also consider many of you dual enrollment started. So if you're in your 30s, most likely you did not go to a school that had dual enrollment. But if you are 25, 26, 27, 28, you, there's a good chance that you actually have some dual enrollment credit. It doesn't always show up on your high school transcript. So if you remember taking an AP class or a dual enrollment class, you have to track down which college. So it might be the local community college in your area, but you really want to pull these transcripts together so that you know what you would be considered. So here you mark what you would be considered if you're a third year junior, first year. Um, and if you, we have a free consultation at thecoachingeducator.com forward slash book. And I invite you to please contact us and I can help you. That's half of our clients are heading to college. When we work with people from all ages, it was a necessity. We love doing it. And we really, you know, this is important because we do not want you wasting money. 
So then you're going after what degree. So if it's if, if it's not your first bachelor's degree, if you put your second bachelor's degree, I'm just letting you know you will not qualify for a Pell Grant. They will not give you a Pell Grant for your second bachelor's degree. And then you mark the appropriately will you have your first degree at the beginning of the school year. And most people are saying no. So then, are you interested in being considered for work study? Yes, if it will help you out and you qualify for a Pell Grant. It's actually a nice opportunity, especially if you're an adult. Um, but if you can't and you don't have the time, don't worry about it. But you can always put yes and see. Most every college has a method for work study, but it would be nice if you do qualify and you may be doing um, you know, you might be involved in chemistry and you might be able to do a lab. You might be able to monitor a lab. You might be able to do a homework lab. So, and get paid for it. So you're already there. They do ask you if you are part of the foster care system. It is important if you were to mark that you were, even if it's one week, because they have all kinds of grants. Colleges recognize that if you were in the foster care system, most likely it's going to be challenging for you to get to college and pay for it. So please, please give yourself that opportunity. Then they're just asking for general data about your parents. If you do not know about your parents' educational path, and many don't, don't worry about it. When that bar drops down, there is an option for that that you're not aware. So you don't have to worry. However, if you're 100% sure or 90% sure that neither of your parents completed college, went to college, may or may not have completed high school, it's important for you to identify yourself as a, the first person going off to college. So that's what this, these two questions are for. So it would be important to fill those out. So now we're looking at an eligibility work Sheet. So you have to say, okay, have you ever received student aid? So if you had been to college and you filled out a FAFSA, there's a high probability that you received aid of some kind. If you didn't receive aid um, and you're sure and you, didn't, you don't remember filling out the FAFSA, then you put no. They ask you about if you have been convicted for the possession of the sale of illegal drugs. So I just want to be clear that every college handles it differently. You need to answer it accurately on this form. And so if you have to answer yes, then it what happens is the colleges work with you and some colleges will, depending upon the severity of the conviction, how long ago, and what you've done to improve your life, they may or may not allow you to live on campus and that's another thing I want to talk about, that you actually, there are many colleges that have adult housing. So I, when I went back to college, I was 28 years old, and I lived on campus in adult housing, and it was awesome. So that's something to consider. So now there, you're going through and you're doing your student information, and this is just purely you. And you're talking about what school you went to, you pull it in, you search, it comes up and it identifies your school, you click on it. Next, they're gonna ask you about colleges that you're looking at. So you're gonna be filling, and you don't have to know this, the federal code, you can just know the state the college is in and the name of the school. If you fill all three of them in, sometimes it doesn't come up. It's like any form. You really, if you put the state and then the name of the college, it comes up. So then you would list your colleges, and many times when adults are going back to school, they're usually already planted in the community so they know exactly what this, which school they're going to. But I would encourage you to, to try some variety in the sense of you may get a really good package, you may get a better affordable package if you try, if you go to the community college, and then work towards the, uh, the, the state college. So keep that in mind, you can put it in. If you apply to both schools, you'll get a financial aid package. And here, where I live, College of Western Idaho and College of Southern Idaho, their prerequisites transfer to all the state colleges, and that started this year. So if that's the case, it's really, it's a third less 
for someone to attend CWI or College of Southern Idaho and then do their final uh, courses that they need to take on the state college campuses, it'll be a lot cheaper in the long run. So again, I would encourage you to look at that. And also, online schools are in here if they're accredited, so feel free to, to utilize that option as well. Many people, that's the way they get to school, and that's important. So then you are identifying if you're gonna live on campus or live off campus. Keep in mind, if you could live on a campus, if that's an option, I, all I know is that that was the, the least expensive housing. It was hard to get on campus. I was on a waiting list for quite a while and I was fortunate enough to be able to get on there. So now you go into, do you have children that do you or will you have children? So they ask you to answer that question. Do you have dependents? So many people who are going back to school, sometimes they're in their 40s and they're actually taking care of their parents and, um, and they actually are claiming them on a on their taxes so it's important for you if you are not claiming the person on your income tax every year then they're not considered a dependent so it's important for you to understand that next it's going to ask you your household your household size and as you can see there's a workshop a worksheet you put one in if you do, if you're not married zero if you are married you put another one and then it will tell you the number to fill in then they ask you who's going, how many are going to college. Now keep in mind if you are a single parent and your child is going to college, you would not be putting that in. Um, they would be filling out their own FAFSA and they put in uh, their own FAFSA that's tied to you, um, but you would, you're listing yourself. Next, you are considering, you will be considered an independent student, and this is, it will tell you, basically. So when they say, do you want to answer questions about your parents, you're going to say no, because you are over 23, you have, or you have children, or you're in the military, or you're, a, you know, there are, or you have been in foster care, or you have had, um, say guardians that have been assigned to you, um, it may be your grandparents, but you're not legally adopted by them. Those are all the reasons, or your parents passed away. That's another reason, if both your parents have died, then you will be considered an independent. Next, you go in, you fill this out. They're asking you for your tax returns two years previously. Most people have already completed them. So you will, again, you'll mark completed. If you didn't, because potentially you may not have made a lot of money or you may not have been working that year. So you can say not, you can say will not file. It drops down, there's a couple different. So if you will not file, if that's the answer you're going to give or did not file, then um, you don't need to use the IRS data retrieval. It actually will disappear. So, um, but you will have to go to the irs.gov, and I'm gonna do a whole little blip on that, where you're gonna request a non-filing status, and that would be important for you to do. But for now, we're gonna assume you have completed your taxes from two years previous. You're marking what the filing status was two years ago. So make sure you do that. I see that a lot where people um, we'll put married, even though they weren't married the two years previous. They ask you if you filed in Puerto Rico, if it's a no or a foreign tax return, no. If it's yes, they'll a series of questions will come up and they'll ask you to fill that in. You click on link to the IRS. It will tell you you are leaving that site. They're just asking you to confirm that you know you're leaving the site. And then the U.S. government has now is letting you know that this is an authorized portal. Don't be in here if you don't need to be in here. You need to be doing what you're supposed to be doing with it. So now you're looking at your income tax. Many young adults move a lot. You have to put in the address of where you were two years ago. Now, the response 
to all of this comes to your email. It used to go to that particular address, so you don't have to worry about that. So if you are not living at the same address, fear not. You need to look at your taxes. You need to fill it out exactly how they have it. If everything is capitalized, write it out. If the street is written out street or abbreviated, you need to do it exactly how it looks on your tax form or this will not take it. It will keep saying uh, there was a problem. Uh, so you need to understand that. That's one of the ways I've had a lot of people come to me and they're stuck on this page. And I miraculously figured this out, I think. <laughs> Just I, I, I ended up finding that out and that is exactly what happens. So then you submit it and after you fill it in, wait, wait, wait. It'll be spinning and spinning and spinning. You wanna wait until this page comes up. And as you can see, now it's saying, okay, what do you want me to do? So you, what you wanna do is right under transfer my tax information, which is three quarters down with a checkbox. You check that box, the, what, the box over to the right, the link that says transfer now lights up blue, I believe. And then you click on that and wait. And then they will tell you it'll spin, it'll spin, and it'll finally come in. And this is where you'll see you have successfully transferred everything. So that's perfect. Now, how now they're going to get into your W-2. So if when you are filling this out, and it's really important that you always get your W-2 from your accountant. You need to now just focus on your W-2 because these next questions are going to be asking you stuff that you'll find on your W-2. So here we are, it says, okay, the first question, did you have combat pay? And if you were in the military and you're not sure about that, you can look at your W-2 and look in box 12, code Q. And it's right there, it's labeled that. If there is a zero, you put a zero. Next, they're gonna ask you if you uh, participated in AmeriCorps, which is very similar to the Peace Corps, but it's the American um, program that, and there are many people, a fabulous program, AmeriCorps, where you get a stipend and you get living arrangements oftentimes. So they ask you many times, it's about $6,000 if you do an AmeriCorps, project, if you work one year for AmeriCorps, you generally get about $6,000 to pay towards school. That's where you would fill that out. But if you've never done anything for AmeriCorps, don't worry about it. So then they're going to be asking you, they've transferred a lot of this stuff in already, and you're, you can't see the numbers. And that is the only thing I have I really don't like this in that they've transferred everything in, they're telling you what they transferred in, and you really can't tell other than it, it said it did it successfully. Now they're going to did the untaxed portions of IRA distributions you reported for 2017 include a rollover. If you had an accountant do your taxes, they will, they'll, they'll put it in a certain box if you don't know where to find it, you can open that question mark and it will tell you the number. If you filed a 1040 or if you did a 10, a, an EZ, uh, they will tell you where to look and you can find it. So most people know when they've taken an IRA rollover. If you don't know, then open up the box, look at the box they've identified on your tax forms and just make sure the answer is no. So then, did the untaxed portion of pensions you reported include rollovers? So a rollover is usually when you pull money out of a retirement account and you're using it for income. Believe it or not, you get taxed with it. So it's a bummer. Um, you want to try to not do that, but sometimes you have to. So again, open up the question mark. They explain it in a little more detail. They'll tell you where to find it on your tax form. And if the answer is zero or blank, then it's no. Next, it's student information. So have you paid child support? Um, and so it's important for you to fill that in. 
earnings from work under a cooperative education program offered by a college. So there are, well, I can give you an example. Starbucks has a cooperative education program. So if you go to school online and work at Starbucks, they have a cooperative ed program. And you would put in what the what Starbucks had given you. And there will be a form that is a 1098T that you'll be able to have that particular number. Then they're asking you about taxable earnings from need-based employment programs, such as work-study. So if you qualify for work-study, you actually get that information. So in January, it'll either be in an email that says, do you want to do you want to have um, this electronically? You usually have to go into your portal and click yes, give it to me electronically, and you'll have that information. Next, we are, they're just asking you, okay, did you receive child support? Now, keep in mind, child support that is court ordered, they usually tell you the number you're going to receive, but if you did not receive that number for the year, you put the amount you did receive. So if you did not receive child support of any kind, and I really encourage single men and women who have, I've seen a lot of them have court orders, they are not receiving their child support from the other person. It is important to put the exact number. If you only received $100 from the, your ex, put $100 even if it's court ordered more. So then they ask you about housing allowances. So people who are usually doing ministry work or missionary work or who are, um, they might be some part of a nonprofit and that's one of the housing allowances. Or they might be doing research and they get a house. <laughs> you know, it's just different things. So you'll know uh, many times in the military, clergy, things. And, the, and again, if you're confused, open up that question mark and it will explain it in more detail. So then they were asking you if you received money. So maybe your grandparents sent you $7,000 to go to college. This is where you would actually put this in. So I encourage, as one of my strategies, if you have people who want to help you get to college, sometimes it's better to take out that student loan and then after you graduate, have them help you pay off the student loan. That sometimes is more helpful. So now you're going to go back to your W-2. As soon as they say W-2 form with boxes 12A, 12D, you can literally look at that W-2, go to the boxes that are labeled D, E, F, G, H. If it's all zero, you put a zero. If it's all, if, you, if maybe a couple of them are filled in, you add those numbers up and you put it there. Then they're asking you about untaxed income not reported, such as workman's compensation or disability benefits. Um, you may be receiving the uh, also uh, benefits because you have a uh, parent who passed away. So it's important and you'll get again a form from that agency and that should be part of what when you're fit, when you're doing your taxes so it should be reflected and you should have that form kind of similar to a W2 where it will tell you what your benefits were. Next you're going to do veterans non-educational benefits and so they're looking to see if you have VA if you have GI money and things like that, if you were on disability, if you received benefits, because those things are not taxed. So that's why they're asking this. Next, so that now they're going to ask for you, do you want to skip the questions about your assets? So many times it's already filled in yes, if you don't have any. So if you don't own a home, if you don't have um, a lot of uh, retirement, if you don't, if you're not uh, running uh, the stock market, you know, if you're basically your, your worth, and I'm talking numbers, is lower than 60,000, then the answer, you know, you want to skip because there, are, you'd be putting in zeros for a lot of stuff. Now, now they're asking you, okay, what is in your checking savings, all of your cash checking savings? They want you to add it up, plug it in, and as you can see, you don't put the cents, don't put the change in. Just round up or round, you know, just round it up. They ask you if you have real estate, but if you just purchased a home or you own a home and there you have no other real estate, 
you don't put in your home, your, your primary residence, you do not calculate into this number and do not be afraid if the number is zero. If you are, if your net worth is zero, don't be afraid of that. That's they, that's normal. So now, as of today, what's your net worth? If you have a business, if you have under a hundred employees, you do not have to fill that one out. You don't include family farms or family businesses with under a hundred employees. So you might have a small business. Now you have saved everything. You're not a preparer. And they let you know that, you know, they're just asking you, okay, you understand this is, you know, we, we want you to make sure that this is who you are and everything in here is a, what you are stating. You click agree, you go to next, you're already in this portal, so you're going to be signing this. You click on the signature, it's going to give that you have provided all the necessary signatures and you submit. So see that submit button? That now goes to any college that you have listed it, that your information, well first it goes into, I call it the FAFSA portal in the sky, and then what colleges do every couple weeks they pull from this and so they'll pull the next group of kids or students or adults for calculating the financial aid based on how that particular college handles financial aid. So then it's telling you, you're gonna get an email with this same page. It's going to be, um, you should be receiving an email within three to five days that says, hey, your FAFSA was processed, no problem. Where there may be problems, sometimes people have put in, um, they flipped their numbers on their social security or their birth date. So that's generally what I see. They, um, you really don't need to print this page. It's just a waste, but this page I want you to print. So when they give you your estimated expected family contribution, you want to expand it. You see the little expand button above the gray. You want to expand it and print it out for your records. This is actually going to be sitting in your email so you can go back and get it again. But when you're applying for scholarships and as an adult, you should be applying for scholarships, you need this page. Many times they ask for it. Okay, so that is the FAFSA explained as a person who's considered an independent student. Stay tuned for our next series, and please don't forget to go to the coachingeducator.com forward slash free downloads and go grab that form so it can make it a lot easier for you to be filling it out and saving the important data for every year because this form has to be filled out every year. Thank you so much. Please like and share our information. We want to help as many people as we can. If you have a comment or you noticed something or you have more tips for other people, please feel free to comment in the, in the comment section. Thank you so much. I'm Rebecca M. Carroll, the coaching educator. Boom. Boom. Good? 30 minutes, yeah. Okay, so now... It's on, I want to see what's next. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in in one, just one second. We just finished. Woo, is it on time? Yeah, I think you're, yeah. Oh, okay.